Ricarda Huch was a German writer and historian. She was born in 1864 in Braunschweig, the daughter of Richard Huch and Amelia Hahn. She studied history, philosophy and philology before entering the University of Zurich. Since 1889 she was tasked to organize some 6,000 brochures from the time of the French Revolution for the city library of Zurich without pay. In 1893 she published her first novel, Erinnerungen von Ludolf Ursleu the Muren, chronicling the business failure of her family to their horror. In 1897 she moved from Bremen to work as a writer in Vienna. Between 1907 and 1911 she was married to her cousin Richard Hoch. Her marriage ended in divorce. Her work on the history of Italian unification brought her renown by the Mussolini government, which saved her from persecution in the Third Reich due to opposition to Hitler. She was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature seven times. She died in 1947 in Schoenberg in Kronberg, Hesse. We will review her 1924 Teufelei und andere i.e. devilry and other stories. Adding one more story compared to the 1897 edition, Devilry is the first and weakest tale. In April 1583 in a small German town, a former teacher is writing the chronicle of how Trude, the daughter of the treasurer, met the devil in the city common. In truth it was no devil but Squire Claudius, a soldier working for the King of France, who was exiled on penalty of death due to reasons of war. So Trude went to the common and pretended she was spending time with the devil to make love to Claudius. The narrator even helps the two make a bigger commotion. The three dress up as devils, capering around the commons until Claudius makes a run for it. He comes back when he may and marries Trude. Devilry the second concerns a painter whose love Ludovica, the pastor's daughter, is charmed by the wicked painter Peter. The man draws only hideous animals before he starts making hideous portraits, after selling his soul to the devil. In actuality, it is the devil himself who paints his paintings in Peter's house, as the narrator sees when he gets himself a ladder. Then not only is Ludovica charmed by Peter, but so is her father and many others in the village. On the day of her wedding to Peter, the whole assembled gaggle is burned to death when the dancing hall catches fire, as the narrator sits in a house of posset and shakes his head. Lying fairy tales as a man get into a relationship with a sea nymph who really, really wants him to rip out his heart so she could eat it, so she could have a soul. He rather goes to butcher and gets her an animal heart, and she devours it without any suspicion, and even accepts his lie about having put a clock in his chest. The end of the world has an astronomer say that a passing comet will crash into the Earth, bringing about the end of the world no later than July 13th, 1599. So you are not listening to this, I guess? Either way, when the astronomer's friend, the pastor Volker, hears of this, he begins to preach to the people to get ready for heaven. All the rich people try to give away their gold, but want to buy some Alraune route from the astronomer to go find some gold in a graveyard should the earth live to see July 14th. The astronomer dutifully scams them all. The pastor, when taking all the gold, has it made into a literal golden calf to show how much they don't want it. But the free love adherents start dancing about it and giving it sacrifice. Then Pastor Volker's kids are brought up, but they play no role aside from having the girl become lame in one leg. When the world doesn't end, the people go and demand the end of the world or their money back. And when the pastor does not bring about the end of all things, they murder him with an axe. The pastor's kids having no point in his story is one issue, the other being the golden calf just sort of sits there and does nothing plot-wise. 